London has been called a godless city. Many have tried to make it a holy one. Now London teems with nearly every faith of the world, but even in the 19th century, when Christianity was at its height, there were some Londoners who wanted something more. Wilt thou yet take all, Galilean? But these thou shalt not take, the laurel, the palms and the paean, the breasts of the nymphs in the brake. Swinburne lived here on Great James Street, off Theobald's Road. In the 19th century, the swell of science and the loss of God for many cut a clearing in the forest of Christendom. And in that clearing, a thousand beliefs blossomed. In the first half of the 20th century, Druidry was revitalised once more in England. As we weren't able to produce any fairies, we found a self-professed witch instead, Dr. G.B. Gardner. In the 50s, Gerald Gardner brought Wicca to the world. In the 60s and 70s, a fascination grew with what came to be called folk horror. Now these were all loosely connected rather than one central belief system. But they all spoke of a yearning for something older, something homegrown. The word pagan is from the Latin meaning villager. It's an insult, the superstition of the locals, not the sophisticated religion of the urbane. In this series, I want to look at the roots of pagan London. Modern paganism would need a series of its own. It is so diverse and so intertwined with the kaleidoscope of the New Age movement. Modern paganism often takes the natural world as its temple, not the city. Now perhaps its spiritual heart can be found in the bookshops of Bloomsbury. This is, um, but there's nothing particularly pagan about Bloomsbury. This part of London is a spiritual sponge. It soaked up the Order of the Golden Dawn, the Theosophical Society, the Swedenborg Society. Seven Dials to the south was the haunt of astrologers. But there are other parts of London that were sacred. The most famous pagan temple in London is the one discovered in 1954 in the city in a bomb site. The Temple of Mithras. The handsome young god averts his eyes as he slays the bull of cosmic darkness. This private, mysterious cult for soldiers, administrators, merchants, was in some ways an early version of Freemasonry for imperial travellers. So it's appropriate that it now has a new home within the new headquarters of Bloomberg, which perhaps also promises wisdom incrementally revealed to initiates. The Temple of Mithras sat here on the banks of the River Woolbrook, which now flows underground. In Roman Londinium, this would have been packed with numerous temples. This was a west field of worship, its waters overflowing with offerings. Pipe clay Venus figurines, fertility goddesses, human skulls but no bodies, face pots, unearthly features staring up at us through the centuries. Iron phalluses carried as charms, lascivious bronze satyrs. And this, London Stone, its meaning unknown, its history silent. It has become encrusted with myth. Shakespeare and Blake weave stories around it. London Stone has always been associated with an area of Cannon Street close to the Walbrook, and this suggests a connection with that sacred river. 
But so far, none of this is homegrown. Mithras was originally from Persia. The Venus figurines were mass-producing Gaul and the Rhineland. The Thames yielded amulets of Isis and Serapis, a cult from Egypt. This serrated bronze clamp with busts of the goddess Sibylle and her son Attis, these were from Asia and they may have been used to castrate British priests. It's no surprise that the Roman Empire imported a lot of its religion, along with wine and fish sauce. If we want to find something that sprang from the English soil, we have to go back much further. And that's where we'll be going in the next programme.